Welcome everyone to an exciting Affinity Design and tutorial how to use the pen tool for lettering design, adapting the box method with the help of guides and switching to the pixel persona to get creative. Up next. The pen tool being one of the most challenging tools to use since it's hard to know where to place the anchor points and how far one needs to drag the anchor point handles, this is where the box method comes in handy. So I would briefly explain that by creating just a simple circle using the ellipse tool to create one and also tap on the edit menu to convert this to curves. Now, looking at the circle, Affinity Designer goes ahead and creates four anchor points with uniform handles. Handles that are spaced and balanced at 90 degrees between anchor points. In addition, there's a box around it, and whatever the box hits the circle, that is where the anchor points are. So, in our example, we are going to follow the same approach by placing anchor points correctly using the box method and carefully place horizontal and vertical guides at 90 degree angles just where the letter Y touches. So in this case I will tap on the document menu, tap on the guides and at the bottom of the context toolbar we have the option to show the guides, add horizontal and vertical guides and that's what we're going to do, insert those into the canvas at 90 degrees angles, just where the letter Y touches. And I'm just going to show you roughly how I'm going to place this around, but we do need to spend time and effort to make sure that these sit very close to the edge of the letter Y, so it is easy for us to place the anchor points. All right, so I'm just adding some horizontal guides here. And I'm going to add some vertical guides as well. There we go. Another one here too. And let's add another horizontal right there. And pretty much that's it. So as I mentioned before, we do need to spend a bit of time an effort to get those guides as close as possible to the boundaries of the letter Y. In this way, we will know where the anchor points or nodes would be placed around the guides. So the guides have been carefully placed horizontally and vertically at 90 degrees. Now we are ready to use the pen tool and draw the letter Y using the box method. So I will go ahead and pinch a bit and grab the pen tool and I will just tap and drag to create the first anchor point, the first smooth point. And this is a smooth point because it's consisted of two control handles. Now, as I mentioned before, we need to do this in 90 degrees. So for that, we need to tap a two finger modifier onto the canvas to constrain the movement to 45 degrees, as you can see here. But in this case, we should stay at 90 degrees. Release that. Tap and drag to create the second anchor point here. And again, I will tap a two finger modifier. Don't worry about the placement of the curve. We're going to do this a bit later. Tap and drag to continue this. As you can see here, the handle here is a bit too long, this second handle for the upcoming next anchor point. So what I'm going to do is I will tap one finger of the canvas and bring this closer to the node. Release that and then tap and drag and then use a two finger modifier again to constrain the movement. I will continue right here, tap and drag. Now, as you can see here, I missed the mark a bit. That's okay. Before you release the pen here, what you should do is you can use a four finger modifier and you can change the origin or the position origin of the node as you create the curve. When you're satisfied, when you're happy with the placement, release that. All right. I'm just going to move to the next point right here. 
tap and drag, use a two finger modifier again. All right. Now, because we have a very short distance, all I'm going to do is just tap once on this node. We only have one control handle. This is okay. We're just going to tap and drag here. And now we're going to create a very sharp corner. And the way we call this is a cusp point. So what I'm going to do is I would tap one finger modifier and I'm changing the direction of this control handle. And now we are creating the cusp point. Release that, tap once, and then tap and drag, hold down one finger of the canvas because we need to have the control handle. And that's because a curve is coming up. Tap and drag to continue this. Use a two finger modifier again to constrain this to 45 degree increments. Release one finger, bring this close because the next anchor point is a very short distance to cover. Release that, continue this, use a two finger modifier and basically continue the same process throughout without any change. Okay, and then we're going to fix this a bit later. In this case, again, I'm going to use one finger modifier to change the direction of this control handle. And I'm creating now a cusp point, which is a sharp corner. Tap and drag. Use a two finger modifier here. Don't worry about the placement of the curve. And I'm continuing the, doing this the same way. I'm following the curve here and creating cusp points when needed. So we have the foundation of the general curve covering the letter Y. Now we're going to go ahead and use the node tool to refine the path and adjust the handle curves to be precise for tracing this path. So first of all, let me go ahead and pinch to zoom in a bit. I would grab the node tool and once I tap on the curve here, the curve path, we can see all of these nodes, which we can adjust by tapping on them and then just use these controls handle and adjust them to match the reference photo. Now, sometimes I'm still going to use a two finger modifier to make sure everything stays 90 degrees. Not in every case. All right. And I'm going to continue this till everything matches and eventually it will. For example, here, I'm going to tap on this node, tap and drag and tap one finger of the canvas to create the cusp point here. There we go. For this one, I'm just going to pull this here. This one, bring it down a bit. Pull that out. You can also move this around a bit. All right. You get the idea as long as things look good. And, you know, I still have a, some time to go here. Again, all I'm doing is pulling on handles and refining what I have. Just make sure things are straight at 90 degrees angles and continue this by just spending a little time on your end, as I'm doing here, to refine the curve. All right, so let me go ahead and show you how to create this small, this small hole here inside the letter Y. So for that, I'm just going to tap the pen tool and I'm just going to wing it here. And of course, you can still use the box method I'm just going to do a simple job here because, you know, I can do that. I can just wing it and create a nice curve here. We'll tap a four finger modifier to just place this carefully here. Release that. Tap one finger modifier to bring this close and just tap to close it. I'm going to switch to the node tool. And going to create this curve here. 
this looks to be okay. All right, so what I will do in this case, first of all, I will tap on the document menu, tap on the guide, and I will toggle off the visibility of the guide so we can see what we're doing. Then inside the Layers Studio, I'm just going to select those two curves and I'm just going to use a fill color. And what I would do is I'm going to make sure that I have a one unified object. So for that, I will tap on the edit menu and under the geometry, I will use the second Boolean operation, which is the subtract Boolean operations. And now we can see we have this hole here. And as for the rest of the reference photo, the process is exactly the same. You just have to create some guides, horizontal and vertical, box this around, and it's very easy to continue. And now after that, we're gonna be ready to go to the next step and do some aesthetic work. All right, so we finished drawing the word yes. Now let's get creative. In this case, I will change the fill color to this one. And then inside the edit menu, I will duplicate this and also change its fill color. And then inside the layer studio, I will tap on the merge and rasterize icon to rasterize this layer. And the reason I did this is because I will switch from the designer persona to the pixel persona like so. Great. Now I will grab the flood selection tool, which is this one, and that will enable us to select pixels of similar color. And as you can see here, I have just one color. So I'm just going to tap once. And because we need to continue the selection for the whole word here, under the context toolbar, we're gonna to set the mode to add. And then we're just going to tap to create a selection for the rest of the word. Great. Now we will switch to the outline selection tool, which is this one right here, which says outline selection tool. And that will allow us to create a new selection based on the outer edges of the previously created selection, the selection that we use with the flood selection tool. So at the bottom of the context toolbar, I'm going to change the pixel radius here. And for the alignment, I'm going to set the alignment to the outside. And I will definitely have circular selections here. And I'm going to set the pixel radius to nine pixels. Then I'm going to tap to apply this because I'm happy what I see. And then I will switch to the flood fill tool, which is this one right here. And that will allow us to fill areas of selection by just tapping. So in this case, I'm just going to use this fill color and just tap and fill the selection. All right, so I like what I see. Then I will deselect by tapping on the X icon. And then inside the layer studio, here is the rasterize layer. In this case, I will duplicate this. So I will tap on the edit menu to duplicate this. Make sure that you have the move tool and then inside the Transform Studio, I'm going to offset the X and the Y to give a bit of a space here. Don't have any gaps in between and create a bunch of duplicates. So inside the Layer Studio, I will select all of these layers. And then again, I will tap on the Merge and Rasterize icon and I will use the Merged Selected. And now I have all of these layers merged together. And you know what? We can also tap on the Layer Studio and we can change the blend mode for normal to another blend mode, whatever works on your end. And now we have something more creative. Thank you everyone for visiting my channel, learning from the inspiring lectures and project tutorials. Subscribe to get the latest and share the knowledge.